All right, welcome back, everyone, to H2H week number 17, H2H, the show in which Tassos and I battle it out each and every week, giving NFL picks, and the person that gets the most right, or I guess I should say units-wise, gets the most out of that week, comes out on top. Tassos, we have an anomaly. We have a miracle, baby. I've won two weeks in a row now, which is crazy that we're at week 17, and I'm yet to do that, but I'm now 6-10, and 10, you're 10-6, 10 and 6, but yeah, two weeks in a row. We're recording in the morning again for everyone watching because that's my new tactic once Tasso talked about the, the, uh, the, the trend of me winning only when we record in the mornings, not late at night. But week 17, 6 and 10 here, two wins in a row. What's going on, Tassos? Um, Got a little bit of a hit of a little bit of a, little bit of a cold streak. Yeah. Last week, 0 and 4 on the show. My worst week yet on the show, so not great. Uh, the Christmas of Santa did not treat me nicely. All you, Christmas, all you do is sweep. All you do is sweep. My bets. Yeah, usually all I do is sweep. This time I got the reverse sweep. Yeah, it's still sweep. Um, Something being swept. Still a sweep. But yeah, listen, I'm 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 leaving the door open for you. I don't know why I'm doing it. I don't know. You know, it's 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 tough, but the door's open. I mean, it, you are, it you, you know the odds like if you know you're in the hunt. If if you're just like yeah. the football graphic, you're yeah. in the hunt. You know what I mean? Like only four games back, and listen, we still got two more regular season. Is it two or three more regular season weeks? Two, two this more this week and next, and then you got obviously the whole playoff run. So I mean, I, I, and I and here's the thing: like I need to win two more weeks to clinch. Yep, officially to knock you out. Yep. But it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. You're making it very interesting. I and I thought like, all right, I'm going to probably win this week, and you know, I'll be eleven and eleven and five, and then all the excitement's kind of out of it. You're kind of making it a little bit of a race here towards the end. It's a bad time for you to get cold. I mean, like right at the end, you've yeah. been bragging like on all this, and it's like, wait a second, what's happening? What's happening? But still got a lot of work to do at 6 and 10. If you guys don't know how this show works, we'll spin a wheel to see who drafts first. We'll then spin a wheel again to see if we're picking player props, spreads, over, unders, you know, totals, uh, plus money plays, Thursday night, all that stuff. Um, and, you know, that can kind of throw us off because, yes, we like to make our own picks. And people have said in the comments, too, why don't you just give our own picks? Well, this is sort of the distinguishing factor of this show. We're at mercy to the wheel. But, guys, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And, uh, yeah, we'll jump right into the wheel without wasting any more time you have any press preference on going first or second or anything like that because the wheel's been kind of up and down i kind of want i i kind of want to go first just to take take the wheel by the balls you know right. just kind of i don't <laughs> i don't want to run from it or hide from the challenge you know okay. i want to I step up to the plate all right um and then at the end of the show guys we have a wheel spin for the fade me round essentially we'll spin that it'll land on me or toss as we get to pick anything on the board and the other person has to take the opposite which has been a amazing section of the show because it either guarantees a win or loss on one side so it definitely sways the ballot here but let's go ahead and spin it toss us right, is it gonna make it to you uh... it's moving it's moving all right it's sticking on ev all right i'm draft so i can set the tone here no. I can ideal, set the not ideal Let's i start i'd like i have a couple spread picks that i don't mind so we're looking at the new wheel now um, and I'm I'm eyeing a spread. And again, what we said, um, I, I believe his name was Brett, right? We took a good a good little uh, tidbit here and tip was once it lands on that slice on this wheel, we'll remove it for the next spin so we don't get you know the same thing over and over again. Um, some some things have multiple slices, but just less of a chance to hit. But all right, let's spin it. Spread is really what I want, and I feel like I've been calling my shot lately. So let's go ahead and, and keep that going. Money line, keep going, keep going. All right, that's not bad. Money line. Money line. That's not terrible. All right. So the thing with this is that there, and, and Tasa, we, we were talking about before we recorded here, like there, there's a lot of, of teams that, you know, are in must-win situations, a lot of teams that really doesn't really matter if they do win, don't win, um, that type of thing. I do think that there's a couple spots here where uh, I kind of feel like a team wants to, to win a little bit more than, than others. Um, and I'm caught between two money line spots here i think i'm gonna go with one that has better odds i don't want to tell you what the other one is but <laughs> let me let me let me uh let me, let me double check my uh my injuries here because you know how i get with this show too because i don't think that there's anyone injured all right i like this spot it's fine i'm gonna go with uh, a team that's been red hot and their offense has been red hot here i'm paying a little bit of juice minus 154 over on Fanduel, but i'm looking at the tampa bay buccaneers here over the Saints. I think that that offense is not to hype them up too much, but that offense is pretty like 
unmatched right now. Like they're 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 moving. The run game's kicking. We talked about it last week, right? The run game's kicking. The the passing game's kicking. And though you know they'll probably um, make the playoffs with two weeks to go, winning pretty much just one of them, I believe. That, but this is a spot in which you know if they get in, they can pretty much seal their their trip to the playoffs because right now they're like you said, they're uh, technically uh, NFL.com considers them in the hunt, right? So I like them again. It's yeah. a little bit of juice, but but it's gonna be hard. Like I'm curious to see you come up with these money line odds are pretty like it's either like they're a huge favorite or a underdog. There's not many of these like like pick 'em spots. So we'll see what you come up with. But yeah, give me Tampa Bay um, over the Saints here. That's that Saints team looks like they've kind of hit like a a wall too. Like. Um, in terms of their offensive cap, you have to say scored 20 plus points. But if you're going offense for offense here, I don't think that we really see uh, them explode. Uh, great pick. I, this was on my board. Uh, Tampa Bay, for me, they have had uh, a little bit of a weird season, but they finally started to click of late, like the last few weeks. Baker Mayfield's playing great. Yep. Like his receivers aren't dropping every ball he throws anymore. Um, you know, so they're they're trending in the right direction. This is a divisional game. I'm pretty sure if they win this game, the NFC South is theirs because obviously New Orleans, this is actually a massive game because if New Orleans wins, I'm pretty sure they have the tiebreaker. Now all of a sudden, the Saints are the one seed in the NFC. They they both be 8-8, yeah? Yeah, they both be 8-8. and I think the Saints are the tiebreaker. So, and Atlanta, I mean, Atlanta's right there too at 7-8, and but this is a massive game. Like these, all three, the only team that's not in this for the NFC South is Carolina. So like all three of these teams are within a game of each other. So Tampa Bay has an opportunity here to to distance themselves a little bit here with a win. Um, and I think they have the, like the Saints just are a mess right now. Dennis Allen's going to be gone. They're going to fire him. Uh, Derek Carr's like screaming at people. They're fighting on the sidelines. Yep. Like uh, he he went from being like kind of likable when he was with the Raiders, and you're like, oh, he's a good guy in a bad situation. And he goes to the Saints, and it's like he's kind of a douche. Yeah. Like the, the more and more we like storylines are coming out. Like it sounds like he just like berates his teammates and like puts them out to blast on in like interviews and stuff. Like kind of kind of a douche. I- all right, Tasso, so why don't you give us your pick here? And by the way, we are now again dealing with technical difficulties. Our our software, I think, is I think is is the Grinch for for the holiday season because we had fifteen plus weeks of of no problems. Last week we had some issues. This week we had some issues. We don't know if it's me, if it's Tasso's, who knows? But anyways, if you see some choppiness, it's just uh, it's just yeah. Like, literally, like uh, you know, at one point we'll be talking, and the next point it just done we're out of it we're just kicked out of the out of the program so yeah. uh my pick for this one i'm gonna kind of take a page of your book and go with that kind of same money line um i'm gonna go here with the colts and get that a minus 155 right now on uh on DraftKings. i just i i know the raiders they shocked the chiefs on christmas and they've been playing very well you know they had they they've been their defense actually looks really well but like if you actually watch the game they can't throw the football. And this is a Colts team that I feel like time and time again, people just keep doubting. And it doesn't really make mm-hmm. sense as to why, because they th- there's no reason to doubt this Colts team. They keep winning. They keep playing well. Gardner Minshew has been fantastic. He's actually, like this season, one of the better quarterbacks we've seen all year. You know, their offense has some punch. Jonathan Taylor's back. Zach Moss is back. Defensively, they're solid. Not great, but solid. I just, like Aiden O'Connell went 9 for 21 with, like, 62 yards against the Chiefs. And it's like, I know they won and they ran the ball. And, like, Zamir White had, like, 140 rushing yards. And defensively, they put Mahomes in some bad pitch situations. But I, I just don't – I the Colts' offense, funny enough, is actually a lot better right now than the Chiefs' offense, which is crazy to say that a Gardner Minshew Colts' offense is, is more potent than a Patrick Mahomes' Chiefs' offense. But that's – that's 2023 in a nutshell. The one thing I'll say, and I guess it kind of helps you, but it also is like the – it's the – ick factor of Indianapolis and Gardner Minshew is they go like good game, bad game, good game, bad game, good game, bad game. They didn't really have the best game last week, but in a sense, if you follow that trend, that would lean, that would, you know, lean towards them having a good week this week. Literally they've gone, and this is just points four, right? Um, but they literally went 31 points, 14 points, 30 points, 10 points. What's next? You know what I mean? Like, it seems like it could be a big game and talk about like playoff picture and whatnot. Like, like uh, the only way that they can stay alive here would be to to win one more loss, and this team's out of the out of the playoffs here. So yeah, uh, I don't hate that at all. I think that um, you know Minshew hopefully shows up, Jonathan Taylor back, all that stuff you said. I don't hate the Colts. <laughs> all right, I got Colts money line, or you got Colts money line. I have Bucks. Money I got line. Colts money line. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now I'll jump in round number two. You're starting it off here. Anything that you like. 
particularly here? Spread money line player prop Thursday night football. I got a couple. Trade. I got a couple spreads. Okay. I got a couple spreads that I'm interested in. All right. Same here. So I think spreads probably the move here because of the playoff factors and all that. But um, we removed that one money line. Now there's another money line still on there. But uh, let's see what we got here. We'll spin it. Yeah, the money lines are just like we talked about. They're not really great this week just because they're either massive oh. underdogs or like is that going money be money line again. It is. All right, but now we won't I have any said. more money line. I guess. But yeah, yes, I just I just said money line's not the best play this week. <laughs> All right, well you know what? I'm happy at least that I got this because there's really not much left on the board. <clears throat> I guess ah, oh, this is tough because like, do you do you take the shot on a big money line or on a big underdog? Uh money line's tough. I'm looking at these now. This is tough. Yeah, there's only one more that I really like. I'm going to go with I'm going to take it before you have a chance to take I'm it. Sure, I'm sure. I'm thinking go, the same thing. Let's see. I'm going to go Bears here, minus 155, kind of the same spot. Chicago's just been playing really well. Okay. I don't, like, it. honestly, it's kind of crazy. Like, a lot of people, they kind of clown them for them, including myself. Like I said, it was kind of a big, you know, price for Montez Sweat. Yep. He's been amazing for them. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the Bears, they, you know, the Panthers, they have that first-round pick they gave them. So, like, they, they can keep winning realistically and – you know, it really doesn't hurt them that much. Um, and on the other side, Justin Fields is playing for his job. Like, he does not – I don't think he wants the Bears to draft Caleb Williams to steal his job. Like, I think he is obviously playing for his job here. And honestly, he's been playing well enough where I think if you're the Bears, you do got a question like, do you draft Caleb Williams or do you stick with Justin Fields? So, I think there is plenty to play for here for Chicago. And with the way they're playing, Atlanta just seems like a mess to me. So, I'm going to go here Bears money line. I just – I think this is a pretty good spot for Chicago. And, and at home, too – in the winter season now, Chicago, obviously, you know, not a really fun place to play in December and January uh, for a warm weather team like Atlanta. So I, I like the Bears here. Yeah, I don't mind it. I think it's, it, to me, it would come down to more of a fade Atlanta spot too. You know what I mean? Like this is, a, this is an Atlanta team that yeah. I just, I can't get behind. Yes, they won me the fade me round last week, but it's like they didn't win that. The Colts lose it. But so I don't, I don't, I don't hate that altogether. I do, I did think you were going in another direction. And now that you didn't, I'm like, uh oh. Did, did he either miss it or is there something wrong with this pick? But I, I maybe it's a little bit too much juice because this is a lot of juice, but it's honestly the last money line I think is viable. Like not even like it, like almost worth taking here. Um, but I'm going to look at a team that, you know, still is pushing for that, that playoff spot. Um, a win would do them some good here, and it's going to be a team that you bet on a lot this this year, the Seahawks over the Steelers. Minus 174 is some serious juice. But before I get into why I like it, I think the only reason I like it is because, one, I believe they're better than the Steelers. The Steelers are a mess. And, two, Seahawks are kind of pushing for a playoff spot. And they've won two straight. So that's why. Like, there's not much that goes into this because the thing I don't like is how much juice we're paying. But is there a reason why you didn't go in that direction or you just like the Bears and the odds better? Uh, the juice was a little bit too much. Yeah. It was a little bit higher than the minus 155. And not only that, I just, Pittsburgh's a really weird team to bet against because just when you like, it's like, you know, just when you think that they're dead and it's over and all the, all the Mike Tomlin, like underdog stats yeah. are like useless. He has a performance like he had last week where, you know, they beat the yeah. Bengals who, you know, were hot and had, and how are on a pretty good run. And then they come out with Mason Rudolph and find a way to, they didn't win. I mean, they, they didn't just win. They dominated yep. them. Um, and so that's my problem here is like, I don't know the Geno factor, like how, you know, he's obviously been banged up. How is he going to look? Steelers defense is still solid overall. I just, it wasn't something that like I looked at and I'm like, out of all the spots, I just didn't love, I listen, Seattle's won me a lot of money this year. I've loved betting on them. I continue to bet on them for the most part. I just think for that money line, it's just a little too high of odds in a game where I I could see the Steelers somehow, some way. It doesn't make sense why they will, but I can see them finding a way to pull out. I a could win. see it happening, and the so, juice, the juice, is, the juice is crazy. Too. The juice is the juice is crazy. That's yeah. kind of what I was saying. Yeah, the Steelers. I mean, the Steelers need to win out, and then a couple. Uh, they need other things to happen, right? The, the the Seahawks could determine their own fate if they went out, um, but. Nonetheless, like I said, I, I, I said the same thing. I mean, the juice is a lot. I was just curious as to what kind of – what would be the no, no, no for this pick. And I think we agree there, like, like yes, okay, the, the hypothetical. Like, Steelers could come out of nowhere. No kidding, right? But the ultimate determining factor is the fact that, like, minus 174 for that sort of, like, 
tongue in cheek. Like maybe they don't even they're not even they're not even that much better than the Steelers type of thing. I see that, but like we said, Tasso, there are not many money line spots on the board. No, like I don't think that there's any any other value out there that like we could we could look at that Bears one. I think because of the odds is good and because they're home and like even the weather is a good point. We just kind of scraped the barrel dry with money lines. Yeah. The only other game that I kind of looked at was that Vikings Packers game, because that's <clears throat> the closest thing to a pick. I thought that is. too. The only thing is though, is that green Bay, like, you know, and they've, they've won me some money and they've won me some weeks on this show. But like I had um, kind of, again, I had a really rough weekend. So I put a large wager just on green Bay, green Bay money line last week versus Carolina just to win a little money back. Yeah. And it worked and they won. But my God, what a sweat it was yeah. against a two-win team! Like I honestly, when they when they tied at thirty thirty with like two minutes left, I'm like, this is I'm gonna lose. Like I just put I put big money on a money line, thinking, all right, it's an easy easy win, and I'm gonna lose like three hundred four hundred bucks now because I was stupid and like and Green Bay's gonna blow this. And luckily they pull it out and I win, which was you know uh, a sweat I didn't think was gonna happen. But I just this Packers team, I don't know what happened. They got hot for like three weeks and now they just look bad. And Minnesota like. Kind of in the same boat. Like, they played Detroit tough, but it's Nick Mullins and this team just, you know, they're doing the best they can, but they're obviously, they don't have a quarterback they can rely yep. on. And, you know, they neither just, one of those teams are, feel like, like said, a safe pick, which is like, neither one of those teams, like, yeah, a, like, like a and that's the thing. Pick. That game, yeah, that game is just such a coin flip, and I just didn't want to get involved in that. 100%. So, like I said, the only thing with that Seahawks pick, and I, if it was lower, I probably would have taken it, but minus 185 against a Steelers team that just love to just bust brackets and, you know, and, and make any, like I said, every time you think they're done, they, they come back and win a game like this. So um, personally, I, I stayed away, but listen, not, I, I don't hate the spot necessarily. Cause I do think Seattle is the better team slightly. A little bit better. I got it at minus 174 on face uh, on Facebook on FanDuel. So I, oh, I guess it's, yeah. I guess it is a little bit better, but even, even one of the, for this show's purposes, that I mean, maybe that you know, ten cents comes into play, but all intents and purposes, it's a huge juice to pick. But I, I felt like I didn't have anywhere else to go. I'm admitting that. But um, all right, we got round number three. You're going to be starting us off here. No more money lines no, on the board. Are. So there's 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 that. Okay. You're starting us off. Oh this damn! <laughs> and we just talked about my pick. Hey, is it? Oh, that's a sign for the. We're back. We're that's back. a sign for We're the back. morning that's recordings. I'm not. I'm not sharp. It's a good, it's a good sign. Yep, for me. that's a sign that I'm it's not a good sharp. Uh oh. You are slipping up now. That's that's the first time you slipped up in like three yep. weeks. So Damn. it's a good Damn. sign. All right, let's spin it. Spread is still I what I want, but you know, get. God forbid that happens. Come on. Thank God there's no money Keep moving. Line. Keep moving. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Nice. 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 All right. Oh, you, you use the God forbid in it. Works. All right. Yeah, we got to make a shirt that just says God forbid. <laughs> but um, all right, spread here. So remove that. Spread. I, I like a couple spots. Like I said, um. There's a lot of good spreads. I, I know I'm somehow going to find the ones that you're like, that isn't, that's not what I thought was a good spread. Um, but, but we shall see. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of spreads I like. Because I have a, uh, this is, I kind of want to go Altiev here, but it might not be, it's not a plus money spot, um, but I want to get this to a number that I like a little bit more. But I have two, and I think I'm actually going to go slight Altiev. Just moving the line a half of a, Point. And it's a little bit risky, but that's kind of why I'm moving it. Now, let's see, again, if you think that this is one of the good spots. But I'm going to go Jacksonville minus 6.5 over the Panthers for minus 118. I know Trevor Lawrence is banged up. I know he might not play. It's the Panthers. I don't think the Panthers. The Panthers competed last week. We haven't seen them do that two weeks in a row, never mind win or loss. They had now won and competed in the next game. I don't think they do that. And you have a Jacksonville team that uh, pretty much – needs to win if they lose they're kicking them they're they're tripping over their own feet and they went from leading the division to uh potentially not even not even uh, uh making the playoffs i think that obviously they'd probably have to lose both in a row but nonetheless i do think that this is a spot where i'm fading the panthers more than i am back in jacksonville if trevor lawrence plays great um but i don't see how the 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 panthers can keep up with um or even move the ball one on jacksonville's defense that Okay, it's had its struggles, but still should be able to handle the Panthers. And two, uh, should shouldn't be able to stop their run game. You picked the bad one. I knew I would. Uh, I couldn't believe that. You After did. I slipped up but and didn't know the draft order, I knew we were back to basics. Uh, it is an interesting stat though with Carolina. Uh, 
five of their last seven games, they would have covered this spread that you just picked, this plus six and a half. So they have been playing tight. They've either won or kept it a one-score game in five of their last seven. The only two times they didn't, they got blown out by Dallas and they got blown out by New Orleans. Yeah. Every other game, they kept it with a that's, touchdown. But that's or Green Bay, goal. Atlanta, Tennessee, New Orleans. You know what I mean? It's like the, the, I, I've, I've, yeah. I've ragged but on the Jaguars this Chicago. But, like, that's – I think my point being is, like, are the Jaguars really that much better than all those teams? Because, like, they have been awful. Fair. Like, they have been hard to watch. I I, I don't hey, – the Jaguars will win this game. There's no doubt about that. I just – betting them in any kind of a spread that that is more than, like, four points is just way, way too risky right now. Like, Carolina, they've got an, an interim head coach. They've got nothing to lose because they don't have a draft pick. So, like, it doesn't matter. Like, they – at this point, you're just trying to win as much as you can and try to build momentum going into next year. And that new interim coach energy, like, it, it works. Like, since they've fired uh, – right. uh, what's his name? Yeah. Frank – have it better. So, I – I guess a, a Jaguars team that defensively is a mess, offensively is a mess. Listen, they're going to win the game. I just – six and a half points for a Jaguars team that has been awful. I just think it's a get-right spot. They, could be a get-right spot. That, could that, be right. You could be right on the money. That could be a that's get-right what I think. Spot. They've gone through a gauntlet of, of – Good to decent teams, right? I guess you could say um, San Francisco, Tennessee is probably the only team in here that's like terrible, but San Francisco, Tennessee, Houston, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Baltimore, and Tampa Bay, kind of a gauntlet of a, of a run. Not like what we saw the Eagles go through there where they played like, you know, but Jacksonville's now lost four straight games. Like you said, Carolina's kind of been doing their job. Like technically speaking, the, I would say the chalked square side is, oh, Carolina keeps this game close. The side of like, well, look what's happening. This is a Jacksonville team that there's also, we got a line read here, right? There's a reason why they're seven point favorites. It's like, okay, well, Vegas isn't just asking people to win money off of them. Like they set this line. Um, I'm buying it to again, minus 118, a little bit more juice to six and a half, just because I like, you know, key number there. Uh, I, I think it's a get right. So you could convince me, not convince me, but I think I would give validation to any argument you have saying what's happened or, or history and all that. You know what I mean? I 100% get that. Yeah. I'm saying what we're talking about now. Like, this is, a, this is a Jacksonville team that should be able to, if they do this, like I'm talking shoulds and ifs that I think lean more towards my side of the coin. That's it. All right. Not, not horrible. I, I don't love it. Like I said, it's, out of all the spreads, I, that's probably one of the ones I would have avoided. But <laughs> hey, I don't hate Well, then it. I called my um, shot there, too. <laughs> You did, you did, you did say it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead here and take. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go Rams minus six here. That was my second. That was my. That was uh, my next Giants, one. So, the Giants actually they they put up a decent fight against the Eagles on on Christmas. Like I know they lost by was it yep. eight? I think they lost by. But like they actually were were hanging with them. Uh, the Rams have been playing a lot better lately, and obviously, and when you come this late in the season, like it's a battle of like who wants it more, and for the Rams, obviously. They're right there in that playoff hunt, and if they lose, they're out. Probably yeah. don't get in, but a win, and all of a sudden you're still right there in the playoffs. So there's a massive game. I, the, the Tommy DeVito thing's over. It was a great run. You know, it was fun. It was like the Jeremy Lin run. Like it was great for a while. It lasted. Took America by storm, but it's over. Like they benched him for Tyrod Taylor. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just this Giants. Even when they had DeVito, and, and like I said, I don't think he was awful, but. Not like he, it's not like he broke records. Like at least Jeremy Lin, like he'd have like these forty point <laughs> games and thirty point. Like Tommy DeVito's best game, I think he had like was against Washington or I don't remember. I think his best game he had like two hundred yards and like two touchdowns. So like, not it's not like he he had it. Not like he was like setting the world on fire. Like he was game managing his, them. His best to, to his win. best asset was being Italian as fuck. Like that was the biggest thing. Yeah, like that, that was, was that his was thing. It. It, was, it was you know playing the Sopranos theme. Yeah. And he was named after the character from Goodfellas. Yeah, it's like, like that. That was Joe his best Pesci's thing. Character. Like that's, Um, but you know, so I just uh, this Rams team. They found their rhythm. Matt Stafford's as healthy as he's been, I guess, this year. You know, and offensively, when he's healthy, like this offense is legit good. You know, their defense defensively, they're 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 meh. Like I don't really love them defensively, but offensively. As long as they got Matty Stafford and like Kyron Williams has developed into a nice weapon for them, um, you know he's got Puka Nakua yeah. and Cooper Cup and all these guys. So I I like the Rams here minus six. I just don't, I know it's in New York and I know the Giants defense isn't awful, but they're five and ten now. Like they yeah. have nothing to play for at this point. It's be, it's more beneficial for them to keep losing and get that draft pick up. So I, I like the Rams here. Minus I like six. the Rams. Uh, like I said, I can't say anything bad about it. it was my it was my my next 
money line pick if we're to go for it. Uh, only thing that could keep me off it, or if I were to try and like go through hoops and ladders to poke holes in it, they're not as good of a road team as they've been home team. But again, I don't think that like their yeah. season is is indicative of what they've been doing recently. I guess the Rams team that's that's pretty good. Like their only loss in the last six weeks has been keeping up to with with the Ravens and they covered that game. They lost by six. They're seven and a half point dogs. It's like it's yep. a team that that all intents and purposes is like playing good football. And I think Kyron Williams coming back is like this bump that maybe Vegas hasn't totally caught up to yet. Like that dude is a monster. He he runs hard, quick, side just like he's literally an all around back can catch passes that that I think changes their offense and Sean McVay as we know needs like a you know air it out all you want but really needs that sort of staple piece running back for his offenses to go and they kind of have that so I actually think I mean I I like the spot a lot I think that the Rams could be like a like a don't don't no one take this too seriously but could be like a sneaky make a push in the playoffs type of a team like like kind of oh out of nowhere they're you know um in the nfc championship i would never bet on that i don't think it's going to get that far but i think that this team when clicks when they do click they're they could be just as good as the eagles just as good as the the lions the cowboys like it's a it's a really good team when they click the thing is We've definitely seen this year, but like I said, they're playing better as of late, but they have not clicked at times, and it's like their defense looks shot. Matt Stafford doesn't look like he's really in a rhythm. So I like this pick. Um, I don't think that the Giants are anything to, you know, I think they're worth tipping your nose at. They don't really concern me. So I I like that spot. Yeah. At, th- at this point, they at, at this point they want the pick. Like I said, there's nothing. It was when they had the little DeVito run, like going into that Saints game two weeks ago, like there was a little something. Like, okay, yeah. now all of a sudden, like you beat the Saints. And then you come in this week and you beat the Eagles and now all of a sudden you're right in the playoff mix. But like, you know, they lost that Saints game and then you lose the Eagles and it's like now you're five and ten. And it's like at this point, what does winning do for you? Like you're you're right there. You could possibly still get a top five pick if you just lose out. Like you're you're right there. Yeah. So I think they have the fifth pick right now. And like like you don't there's one thing when a coach gets fired and it's like, oh, the team rallies around that. Nobody rallies around the quarterback getting benched. That is a deflating locker room thing. No. You know what I mean? So I, I don't mind that bit. And I think I think Dable's, Dable's safe. Like, this isn't like a New Orleans situation. Like, the Saints, even when they're down, like, even if the Saints lose this week and they're 7-9 and nine and they're technically yeah. done, they're going to keep fighting because Dennis Allen needs his yep. job. Brian Dables will be back next year. They've had so many injuries. He has the excuse. He has the built-in excuse of injury. Like, their wide receivers got injured. Their their line is terrible. Daniel Jones gets injured. Like, you can't fire a coach for that. So, 100%. Jumping into the fade me round. Uh, Guys, if you don't know what this is, you'll see a wheel pop up on your screen, like you have for the majority of the show. But you'll see a wheel pop up on your screen. It's going to have Tasso and me. And whoever this wheel now lands on gets to make a pick across the board. Player prop, spread, total, no rules. The only rule is, is that the other person has to take the opposite of the pick. So this has been a game changer. A lot of weeks have come down to, so up until this point, we've given three picks. Even if someone rattles off those, you, 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 pick, you pick the fade me pick, right? And you could kind of redeem your entire week. So this is something that definitely, I think, um, is unique to our show. And we've had one comment by some jabroni being like, the fade me round is stupid. Everyone else has loved it. So that guy was wrong. That's like, that's like the people ask, uh, saying that, you know, Tom Brady's a bad pick or Michael Jordan would ever make it or that type of thing. That's that guy because fade me's on that level. But um, you want the fade I, me or you I don't want the fade had me. What are you thinking for this week? In, did I have it last week? Okay. You had it last. You had it last no, week. Yeah, it lost. Fade me has been blowing up in our faces. I think we're one of like the last, which is because I had it yeah. more of the time. But one of the last uh, like four weeks, which is I crazy. think you should take it. I, I want. God forbid I get it. You know, I, I. God forbid you get it. I should say. God <laughs> we'll forbid see. you get it. Like I, you know, I, I. Do we want? Do we like the two pie slices, or should I add like a couple more? I, I like the two. The fifty-fifty. All right. All right. Well, it's still 50 well, I mean, yes, technically, yeah, that's a, that was a stupid moment. <laughs> yeah. but. All right, it looks like that, that, that is no chance that makes it all the way around. Uh, I don't love this because I don't love the board. I think as these weeks progress, Tasso, it's like it's going to be better to not have the fade me and put the power in the other person's hand to find a spot. I like the pressure, um, I, that I want being the pressure said, on you because the lights shine a little bright for you over there. So I, I, like, I like the pressure on okay, you. Okay, Mr., Mr. Lewis fade me last round, but whatever, fair, whatever you want to say. Um. <laughs> Oh, this this is this this is not the best spot because there's a few spreads that I'm like, okay, th- this could work, but not fade me esque. And to be honest, I feel like spreads maybe not the fade me pick because that's what that's literally you're now picking the line that Vegas is like, hey, you know, it's the toss up no matter what. Um, 
All right, this is this is a, this I'm, I'm is a tough one. I might I be going. Go. I might be going super I'm very, juiced. I'm very interested. I think I'm going super juiced, and you're. I'm gonna go super juiced, and I think you're gonna like your spot. I'll to be it honest. Oh, uh, I, 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 I might know where you're going. You, you think you know? know? Let's see. All right, so best odds over on DraftKings, minus three hundred five. I see here. Actually, I see three hundred five or three ten. We'll get the most updated odds. That's crazy juice to be paying, but I'm hoping that it's just an L for you. Kansas City over Cincinnati. I feel like you're probably gonna like can't you're liking it. You're gonna like taking no, Cincinnati like, and everything. Like okay, good. That, see, didn't we say that last week that like the the feeler of a fade me as if the other person has even remote confidence in the other side? You know, Kansas, Kansas City as bad as they've been, they are a little bit better than as bad as they've been. I'm not saying the wide receivers are good or anything like that, but coming off of that loss. They should be able to pull this one out. You do have a Bengals team that, you know, backs against the wall in terms of they want to make the playoffs and stuff. I get that. But this is a Kansas City team that you just can't imagine they, they drop uh, another dud, right? Like, that that doesn't seem like it's them. The problem here is, Tasso, if Kansas City loses, you pretty much win the week no matter what. That's the door that I've opened up. That's a huge... Uh, so you have... Let's see if I have the best odds up in front of me. So on FanDuel, plus 265 for you. So that's a big, big swing... swing. And the Bengals are they capable. Are. The Bengals are capable, but I just, I just think Kansas City has to come out. Like, forget, forget anyone else. Mahomes and Kelsey should be like, f that. We're we're winning this next game because we're not collapsing like this. So, um, again, paying a lot of juice. There's a couple different strategies, like we've said, that that go into. Um, Fade me. This is the take the mega favorite, uh, but you kind of open the door for the the underdog to hit, which Tasso did. I took. I think it was Kansas. Did I take Kansas City against Green Bay? You did you did? So this this is me. This is a Kansas City chance to redeem themselves because that was a blow up in my face. So I don't like that trend. But Kansas City money line. Yeah, I just I'm, I hate this because I I, th- I thought you were gonna go Baltimore, and I know I got burned on that. I know I was completely flat out wrong, but I'm still. I'm going to die on this hill of, like, they're not as good as people say they are. Like, yes, they, they, they had a lot of lucky bounces go their way. Like, you know, out of, like they had five interceptions, but three of them were, like, off of tips. And, like, you know, it just happened to fall. Like, a, there's so much yep. that happened in their favor. And, like, what be that as it may, this isn't where I thought you were going to go. I thought, like, you were going to take – when you when I heard the odds, I'm like, oh, this is not what I thought. I think this is not a team. Yeah, I just this didn't – The Bengals team has been fun and, like, you know – Jake Browning has done a decent job replacing Joe Burrow, but I don't buy this. Like, I, I think Kansas City, especially, like, everyone, yeah. it's just gambling one-on-one. Like, everyone is so down on Kansas City right now, and everyone, you know, they lost to the Raiders on Christmas. I'm like, this has been going on all season long, and it just feels like this is a spot at home. I'm sure Taylor Swift will be in attendance. Like, I'm sure, you know, everyone <laughs> in the media is talking about the Chiefs' downfall, and obviously the Bills' loss, and the reaction post game is still in everybody's mind, and I just think it just screams Chiefs. Like, not even – I don't like the Chiefs on the spread. I, that seven points is a lot for them. But money line, they're, they're going to win this game. Like, I, I... – For the – this is obviously – this isn't a bet that you take – like, again, what Fade Me technically is, is Tassos and I, with odds included, so that's the, the fair maker, but, like, we're betting he has to take the opposite of this. So it's like that's where – that's my gain here, hoping that, yes, the Chiefs don't make me many units, but what it is, it's a knock and a cut to his knees of a minus one unit yeah. for him. So that's the, the, the fun of the show, I guess, because I wouldn't take this as a straight bet, minus 305. Like, yeah, no kidding. But when the other person's taking the other side, now you're looking at, okay, there's a little bit of net gain there. So uh, it's hard to argue – for the, the Bengals here, other than the fact that uh, they have looked competent plenty of times this year, and the Chiefs have not. So it's like, if you take those into account, maybe this is crazy, but again, reading the lines, like, Vegas thinks they're going to smoke them. The world should think that, but a lot of people, not not to not to compare, you know, apples and oranges here, but there could be some similarity. This is like a, a where everyone thought the Patriots were done, right? It's like, well, maybe this, I wouldn't be surprised if the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl this year. Like, I, uh, I would, yeah, because that, I don't that, think that their offense clicks. But but my point my point being it wouldn't be the it wouldn't be earth shattering I guess yeah. I should say I shouldn't say I wouldn't be surprised but if like all of a sudden Patrick Mahomes goes on a playoff run okay I feel like I've seen crazier exactly, in this yeah. world so uh, yeah Chiefs money line that's gonna do it for the the show uh, 
Tasso, we had some technical difficulties, but we power through that. That's what we do, and that's what the people love. And by the way, we should talk about before we close the show. When Tasso originally was like, I think we can get to 45K by the end of December, by New Year's, I was like, no, you're dumb. That's no chance that happens. We're probably going to hit yeah, that we're goal. Ju- we're just, like, right now, we're at like, 44,844. Uh, at the time of recording, so we're, we're so I mean you know, less than two hundred, less than less than one fifty, less. Got, yeah, we've got or less to what, than one sixty. Yeah, till Monday. Yeah, so so yeah, I mean, I, I think we'll hit it. Uh, appreciate everyone tuning in, hitting that subscribe button, liking. I've been going live now, which has been super fun. Tasso and I have kicked out around the idea of maybe doing an H to H live, like Tasso. Maybe for the end of the year, we start doing uh, some more like live that. stuff yeah. here. Uh, on for for h to h because that could be pretty cool people chiming in doing the wheel live we can kick around some ideas but uh yeah we'll say as we always do if you made it to this point in the video comment fade me just so we know because we're starting to realize that the names and recognize the usernames and appreciate the hell out of anyone that actually puts in that much time because as Tasso and i'll tell you these videos take a lot of work you know whether it's his shows my shows the shows that we do together takes a lot of work but you guys make it Absolutely. pretty damn worth it so uh, anything else you want to say to the peeps nothing just don't don't jump ship i know last week i talked my shit and i was like you know comment team tasso if you're with me and i and i feel like <laughs> it was the worst possible time for me to go for that and be like yeah dude like everyone just hop on my bandwagon it's like oh he went oh and four like the worst possible time like don't jump ship Up. yet like that bandwagon is a two seat convertible. You asked for too many people to get in the back of your car and you didn't yep. have a big enough car. You're like, I'll drive. Like, and it's like, okay, I, I had been okay, I don't have every enough room. And to be fair, I had a, a right to be because I was on a great. I mean, I'm still overall, it's... I'm on 18 and 10 run in my last, what, like, what is that, 28 picks to do four picks a week, trying to do some mental math real quick. That's the last seven weeks. 18 and 10 record over the last seven shows. Like, still, still solid, but yeah, really. Oh. It, you're ten and six. You're ten and six. That's a that's a playoff yeah. team right now. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like it's like I guess. But but recent history. That's what people. That's what people cling on to. I'm 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 red hot. And you know, are we are we are we? Uh, you know, two different trajectories here. Probably not. But I'll take my Listen, wins when I can get them. People are starting to ask if I am the Dallas Cowboys. Like when they, when the lights when it finally means when it gets to the end of the season and means something. Am I falling apart? I mean, that question's got to be asked at some point. Yeah, did you re-up? Did you make your did you make your uh, next contract based on the middle of the year? And now it's like, well, we already inked the paper. <laughs> that's that's your your that's literally. I, what you listen, are. all I need we'll is see. two wins. We'll see, and we're good. Two wins. What's interesting is I don't know how I, I haven't measured how it ends out. Is there a chance for a tie? Because so there's seven. No, because right now it's ten and six. So there's seventeen. And there goes there's eighteen weeks it, regular we, season. And then yep. wild card divisional. Conference four, championship, Super Bowl, four Super so that's Bowl rounds, twenty-two. There, there's a world where we could be like eleven and eleven. Could be. We'll think about that rule because maybe it's like if if we're tied going into this, or if we're if there's a tie for the Super Bowl, we'll have to figure out a way to to backtrack of like, you know what I mean, like tiebreaker. So we'll figure that out. I hope we don't out, get but, to that um, point. I mean, I was up. I was yeah. ten and four. I hope we don't get to a point where we're like ten and ten or eleven and eleven or. <laughs> Yeah, technically, that, that sh- if, if we tie, we should make the rule now that if we tie, like I would. Yeah, that's fine. That's you know what? That's we don't even need to discuss collapse. tie breakers. If you get to 11, if we're 11 and 11 at the end of the year, you can have it. Like, I don't deserve to win it if I blow that a 10 4 lead. If I go 1 1 and 7 in the that's last crazy. eight weeks, I don't deserve to win it. Fair. Okay. All right. Well, um, I think it's going to wrap it up for episode number 17. We haven't missed a week yet. We won't miss a week. So, shout out to everyone that's been tuning in. Um, And we'll catch you guys in the next one.